Hello and welcome to Benchmark Magazine. Today we are talking to Mike Burgess, EMEA Sales Manager for TACX. Hello, Mike. How are you? Hi, Sherry. I'm good, thank you. Yourself? I'm very well, thank you. Mike, thank you so much for coming over and um, giving us a little bit of an insight of how uh, TACX has gotten to where it is today and what the, the company's experience of the market is at the moment. So can you give us a um, summary of the company's history, please? The history of the company is actually quite a long one. We've been going for over 60 years now. Um, set up by Mr. Takanaka in Japan in 1959 when he produced his first active infrared beam. Uh, he grew the company very much in Japan. And then in 1989, we went into America. And in 1994, I think it was, we went into or came into the UK. So we now have operations in uh, Europe, in America, in Australia, and then our head office in Japan. And I understand you also do a lot of work in South Africa, don't you? I do. Part of my role as EMEA South Africa, um, uh, manager is I actually do go all the way down from Cape Town all the way up to Iceland and then from Russia across to Portugal so it's quite a big territory um, but yes Africa is very much a, a thriving market for South Africa and we're expanding further and further into sub-Saharan Africa at the moment. Wonderful what do you think or what do you feel your toughest markets are and why? The toughest market really would be Germany, simply because we have very stiff competition uh, from the likes of Bosch and Siemens, German manufacturers, and also the market is different. And as I look around the EMEA region, different products sell in different places, there is a different level of competition, and then there are the more price-focused markets versus the quality-focused market. So it really does vary from product to region as to where we would find the most difficulties. Mike, are there any local conditions that makes TACX introduction into the market more difficult? There are very much local conditions that will do that. Um, for example, in South Africa, which is very much a country that isn't led by home automation, by technology, it's more driven from group uh, ground level. And there we find that there is less influence from the do-it-yourself market. Whereas if we look in the UK now, many, many people have got home automation, home um, set up on their camera, on their phones where they can monitor their CCTV. And that's the way that market is being driven. Now, we're very much not a DIY product. We are a product of extreme quality and value that needs to be set up correctly and implemented into the right sort of project to benefit from that uh, quality. Do you find that people get, um, if they talk about security, they always think about CCTV instead of thinking about beams and external solutions? Yes. Um, the way the market is going now, the way people are perceiving security, if you went back 20 years and you said you had a camera on your house, people would go, are you a football player? Are you royalty? Why, <laughs> why do you have a camera on your house? Now, it's certainly in the street I live, I would say at least 30% of the houses have CCTV. The drive for external perimeter protection is still very much uh, an untapped market. Everybody is worried about having their internal security and having their cameras, but we're still finding there is a requirement for good external detection. And is this, is this more for things like um, industrial sites or does it go across um, residential as well as schools or uh, offices? Again, it varies across the market um, as to whether it's industrial or residential. The residential side of things has grown dramatically across the entire EMEA region, particularly as we found the economics have changed and all of a sudden crime has changed in relation to the economics. 
We've always seen security on an industrial side, but again, the quality of the products being used are being more closely examined and people are recognizing that there are different values, different qualities of products on the market. The home market is much easier for the cheap brands, for the DIY, for the stuff you buy online and fit yourself. Industrial still has that professional side to things. So how do you avoid false alarms when you have perimeter uh, barriers? Now, a lot of installers would get annoyed if I say there's no such thing as a false alarm. There are unwanted alarms. There, are, there is always a reason why a product has given an alarm. Mm -hmm. With our products, I would suggest that nine times out of 10, it's because the installer hasn't fully comprehended the product, the limitations of the product, because every product has its limitations, and their expectations of how a product will work. If a product is set up correctly, if it's a quality product, it should be able to perform without giving unwanted alarms. What is your flagship product and why? What's the USP? The core product that we're known for, you'll see on the back here, we have our active infrared beams. Now we have led the market for decades with our quad intelligent beam. This is a beam that um, will cope with in different difficult environments, different temperatures. And again, if it's set up correctly, it will give years and years of reliable um, service. And to set us apart, to give an indication of the quality of the products, we quote MTBF, mean time between failure rates, well in excess of two decades for many of our products. So that gives you an indication of how long we think a product will last. To give you an example, there are certain locations in the UK that we have had products in for over 30 years, but they will not change because they won't go wrong. <laughs> That's not such good business, is it? <laughs> we focus, we would rather you have the right product than a product you have to keep changing every three or four years. Last year, you, you launched a new product that works on battery only. How can you assure your clients or your installers that the product will last a long time being a battery operated product? Everything we do at TACX, we look at the problem and we over engineer a solution. Now we've had battery powered beams for the last couple of years now but it was a compromise because the technology we use in our wired beams uses double modulated signals, which is quite power hungry. And we've always been told that we would never be able to achieve a battery powered solution using that technology. So the first products we had were a compromise to give us the battery life, but with a working product. What we did last year was we actually overcame all of the problems of trying to give double modulation with battery, which we've now done, which means we now are able to offer a battery powered solution that has the same characteristics as our best selling products. In the past, we've had to warn people, if you want to use this product, this is where you need to be careful. Now we can offer a product that actually you can use it wherever you want to in the same way you would use our hardwired beams. So it's giving that confidence back as a battery powered solution. Last question, Mike, how can a person that is new to TACX learn about the products, get education about it? I know that you are very keen on education. So tell us where people can find out more about the products, how they work, how can they use them? Education is by far and away the most important aspect of our business that I would suggest an awful lot of people forget about, think they know everything. There's still a huge amount of mysticism about active point-to-point -point beams. It still has that mission impossible feel to it that people think, no, it's far too complicated. It isn't, it's very simple. I've actually written a couple of guides which explain passive infrareds and active infrareds the very basis of how they work, where you can use them, why should a price vary so much between different products. They're guides written for anybody to read, 
So you don't need to be technical. You don't need to be an engineer. It will simply give you the grounding of what you're looking at with this type of product. Why could this product be better than a different type of product? All of this is available online. Uh, we all have it on the website. So you can download it, read it. It's very simply written. I've written it so that you can sit on the toilet and read it. It's that. <laughs> it's designed for that sort of environment. I've tried to keep it light and easy. I have written it the way I would say it. So it gives you a grounding so that you're not suddenly thinking, oh, it's a beam. I, I don't know what to do. Okay, it's a beam. Do I need a twin beam? Do I need a quad beam, an anti-crawl beam? What distance do I need? It's looking at all of those aspects and giving you the information so that you can ask the right questions to get the right product rather than choosing the most expensive or choosing the cheapest looking at it properly and getting the right solution the first time. Nice. There are a few videos online. Um, I've been with TACX now for over 20 years and I do get some random interviews thrown at me that suddenly appear that I knew nothing about. Um, but the message tends to be the same. Come and talk to us, experience us and let us see if we can help you. Wonderful. Mike, thank you so much for this insight. And do you have any views for 2022 as to what's going to be groundbreaking? Apart from getting traveling again, which actually, although it's something we've always done, does seem to be groundbreaking. Um, off to Madrid next week, off to South Africa for three weeks next month. We are finding that the market is coming back after the last dreadful couple of years and normality seems to be resuming. There will be some products that we'll be introducing in different areas of the world, uh, specific to different areas of the world. The market is coming back and I think you'll find that we're all relieved about that. And yes, as I say, traveling again, that is the key. One thing we have missed over the last two years, doing this type of interview, doing Zoom meetings, team meetings. Yes, functionally it works, but it's not the same as meeting in person and enjoying the company of the people that you're working and partnering with. So where can we meet you in this year? Um, you can either find me at Secure, you can find me in South Africa, if you happen to be down there in March, I'm there for most of March. Then we're doing the security event show in Birmingham, um, which we're all looking forward to. It was a success last year. Then we've got IFSEC. Um, it'll be nice to get back to IFSEC um, and see, hopefully, the same familiar faces that we've seen in the past. And because people haven't been able to go to exhibitions so readily over the last couple of years, we're hoping that Interest will be high, attendance will be high, and results will be good. Wonderful. Mike, thank you so much, and I will see you at one of these shows. Looking forward to it. Thanks for your Take time. Take care. Bye.